Hi, welcome back, hope you're well. I am here with my October wrap up and boy, what a month this was. It is insane that this month was so incredibly miserable, especially following up with September, which if you watched that wrap up, you know I had a fantastic, phenomenal month. And this month was just the worst. The actual, I had one five star and that was a reread. So not a happy gal this month. And the DNFs too. Oh, don't even get me started. Well, I mean, that's the whole point of this video. So I'm, you're going to get me started. But anyway, the first book that I finished this month, I finished on the 3rd of October. And that was Night Will Find You by Julia Heberlin. And I gave this book two stars. So this book was actually gifted to me and the person who gifted this to me is a reader but she has very very specific tastes like she almost exclusively reads mystery thrillers that involve a very successful woman of some sorts being put in a very compromising situation of some sorts so this book as i was reading it i was like i can see how she would like it i can see this book is very her however this book was not very me which is why i gave it two stars i did almost dnf it but it was just interesting enough to the point where i wanted to finish it the weird thing is this book has like stayed with me like i've thought about it a lot but it's still just it's so not me and then i just i don't know i didn't really connect with the story i didn't really connect with the characters overall just not my vibe. What this book is about is essentially this woman who is a scientist, I believe she's an astronomer looking for aliens, is also a psychic and she is brought in by the police to help solve a mystery of a missing girl. And then as she's helping him, she also becomes the target for a conspiracy theorist podcaster and she's just kind of dealing with her being a psychic while also being a scientist, working with this detective who is very skeptical of her, and then this podcaster trying to essentially ruin her reputation. So it definitely is interesting, it just I'm not the audience for it, so that was my main problem with it. But despite the fact that I gave it two stars, it is a book that I would recommend if it sounds interesting. The next book that I finished, I finished on the 5th of October, and this was my reread that I gave five stars, and it would be none other than The Love hypothesis by Ali Hitzelman. It's basically about a PhD student who ends up fake dating a professor at her uni because her best friend wants to date her not old boyfriend but like she went on a couple dates with him and her best friend's like into him but she doesn't want to break girl code so she fake dates a professor. It's fun. It's a very fun read. I've talked about Allie Hazelwood a lot, especially in my last wrap up where I read Love Theoretically. Her books are fun, they're very enjoyable, and I won't take criticism on them. So if you don't like them, I completely respect that, but I don't want to hear about it because I love her books very, very, very much. I think they're very fun. They make me very happy and they're just also so silly and goofy. They're the perfect read for if you want to turn your brain off. There's a lot of science talk in them, especially the newer ones, like in The Love Hypothesis there's very little science and then in Love Theoretically there's the most, but it's not to the point where it distracts from the story, at least not for me, I am not a science person. Anything science related completely over my head. You know how they say in one ear out the other? It bounces out. It doesn't even go into the ear, it just bounces. So not a science person, do not get science, didn't do well in any of the sciences, like do not even come near me with that and I'm fine reading it, so I'm I'm fine, you'll be fine. 10 out of 10, would recommend. The next book that I finished is actually a previous DNF, and it is A Curse of Dark and Lonely. And I finished that on the 11th October, and I gave that 3.5 stars. So I originally DNF'd it because it felt like it was written for the younger side of YA, and I just couldn't really connect with it. Like, it felt like it was more so written for a 12-year-old, which is completely fine. I understand that when you read genres that you're not the audience for, it's not 
always going to click and that's not the story's fault because you chose to pick up a genre or a storyline that wasn't written for you as the target audience and that's completely okay. I never really judged the book for that and I did actually want to finish it so I found out I could request the audiobook from my library so I did and they bought it for me and I ended up finishing it and I did actually enjoy it quite a bit. I actually will be picking up the sequels once those have been purchased for me as well which even when I read the original it was never my plan to continue the series I just wanted to read the first book so the fact that I enjoyed it that much was really fun. So basically A Curse of Dark and Lonely is a Busey and the Beast retelling. So the main girl Harper is basically kidnapped by the prince the beast's assistant and taken to his kingdom where he tries to get her to fall in love with him and it's a very very close retelling to the original so aside from minor details of what his beast is if he turns human things like that obviously that changes but the actual like storyline follows the original fairy tale pretty closely which i really enjoy i love retellings there's this one book series i don't know the name but i really want to get into that book series because it's just a bunch of retelling so it was really fun if you can either put aside the genre of it being YA and look past it or if you are the target audience for that genre if you're on like the younger side I would say maybe like 15 ish I do think this is a very fun book and fun series honestly I really did enjoy it I'm excited to continue the story at some point point when my library buys me the books and yeah I think it's just going to be a good old fun and dandy time and I mean it's a fairy tale retelling how could you not like it so the next book that I read I finished on the 12th of October and I gave it three stars and that book would be Stuck With You by Allie Hazelwood so basically this is one of her short stories that is in the love to loathe you collection so the one thing I liked about this book is is although the male character was again like eight feet tall doing the rock johnson muscle man she was actually intimidated by him for a little bit which i liked because as a woman i do find height attractive like do not get me wrong like with any person man woman non-binary i find height to be attractive not a necessary quality but just if you have that you know but especially when it comes to men if they're a lot bigger than me in both height and width and weight and strength that kind of scares me i don't like it when men are so big that it, i look at them and i'm like you could squash me with a pinky finger so i found that to be very relatable and i like that she was a little bit intimidated by it because it was nice to see that quality of me in a different character so i did like that but yes this one was just basically about an engineer falling in love with a different engineer in her office. There's really not much you can say about it because again they're like 100 pages so it doesn't really go too in depth. And then also just to clump these together I also finished Below Zero. I finished that on the 17th. Three stars. It was fun. This one I had read before actually but I was reading all of them so I wanted to read it again. And also you will notice I did very much read these out of order so that was my mistake but that's just how they came in from the library so not much I could do about it but this one was fun this one is she's in the arctic doing something for a project and she gets stuck in a hole <laughs> and he comes and rescues her when he's not even on the trip so yeah and then the other novella that I read was Under One Roof and I finished that on the 25th of October. I also gave this one three stars but this one was definitely my favorite one. This one was just really fun. So she is an environmental scientist and her mentor died and left her half of a house and then the mentor who passed away her nephew owns the other half of the house and then they're kind of roommates and then naturally of course they fall in love so they were all fun under one roof was definitely my favorite one very short very fun very quick 10 out of 10 would recommend the next book that i finished is in charm's way by lana harper and i finished this on the 16th of october i ended up giving this one three stars and i'm not sure if this is my lowest rated in the series or if it's on par with most of the reads but i do know i enjoyed this one the least partially my fault because one massive reading slump this month nothing was hitting right nothing 
was it was bad it was a really bad reading slump i've only just kind of gotten out of it thanks to the final book that i finished so that was the first problem with me the second problem with me is the other three books in the series i listened to and then this one was gifted to me so i physically read it so the issue is that i really did not remember what happened in the series because i've I've been reading these books since the first one came out, so there's always been a year gap, so I don't really remember what happened in the plot before. And these are interesting because they are interconnected standalones, however, the plot carries over quite a lot. So it's not like normal interconnected standalones where it's like, oh, you can pick up book three first, but you'll kind of know a bit about book one and two, but it won't fully spoil it. No, like you need to have read book two to know how it carries on in book three, even though it's a different character in book three than in book two, if that makes sense. So I didn't remember the plot. So I was very lost plot wise. So that didn't help me. I was really struggling to get into it. My one gripe with this book is that there's no real like plot reminders. So usually when you watch a show, they have a recap of the previous seasons or like the parts of the previous episodes that are important to this one. Or when you watch a movie at the beginning, they kind of just give you like a brief little info dump of what happened in the first one as a reminder and I really appreciate that because sometimes you don't watch the first movie that happened with me I went with someone to watch the second spider-man movie of Tom Holland but I had never seen the first one so that brief little synopsis at the beginning where they were like oh yeah everybody appeared back because this happened and it catched me up a lot and I could understand what they were talking about for the most part this book doesn't do that it's just like a oh yeah this person did this but it's really like it's one sentence it's not explained well enough so I was very confused I couldn't understand why she was in the situation that she was because I couldn't remember and I really wanted to read it and I didn't want to wait I think it was 12 weeks or something for the previous book to come off hold so it was fun it was good it's a continuation of the series so I don't really want to get too much into what the book is about in case you want to pick up the series but there is a fifth book coming out called Rise and Divine. I don't know when, but it is coming out. So my plan is to purchase the rest of the series and physically reread every single book before then so that I'm caught up and I know what's happening. The next book that I read was See You Yesterday and I finished that on the 17th of October and I gave it 3.5 stars. So this one was actually a very fun read. It's basically about this girl who entered uni and her first day went absolutely terribly but then she wakes up the next morning and it's the same day. So it is a time loop trope. But the reason I really enjoyed this one was because someone else was stuck in the time loop with her and my problem with time loops are that they're so repetitive that I find them boring no matter or what but because she had someone stuck in the time loop with her it didn't feel like the same day over and over and over because she was having different conversations they were doing different things they were going different places so it was fun but it is just your basic time loop story it is a romance as well which was fun they're a very cute couple this author's books i find to be very comforting and not cozy but it's definitely if you just want kind of a warm hug in a book situation her characters are also diverse, very realistic. They're not super tall and skinny and muscular. They're normal people, which I absolutely love. I love when book characters and movie characters and show characters are just normal people and they're not these supermodels with unattainable beauty. So really loved it. It was very fun. And overall, I just recommend her books because again, they're just very much a warm hug with ink on paper. So the next book that I read was Want to Know a Secret by Frida McFadden. I finished it on the 18th of October and I gave it 2.5 stars. So the reason I picked this one up was because Frida is great to start start guessing out of a reading slump because no matter how little motivation you have to read or how bad your reads have been, her books are so quick paced and addicting that you will binge it. And that's exactly what happened to me. I read this book in I think two days. So it's a very fun book. I really enjoyed it. That is a lie. 
I don't know why I said that. I am a liar. It was a fun book, but I am kind of guessing tired of reading McFadden a little bit. That being said, won't stop reading her because again, her books are perfect if you just need something quick. Like her books aren't short by any means. Some of her books are 400 pages, but 400 pages of her books compared to a romance or a fantasy go so much quicker. They're really, really, really fantastic for that. So that's why I'm not going to stop reading her books. However, one thing about her work, and I have mentioned this before, is they're all very fat phobic, which I don't like. I'm a woman. If you are a woman, you know what it is like. The pressure of you need to be a certain weight, you need to be a certain size, you need to be a certain body shape, you need to have a flat stomach. I truly believe that it is very toxic and unhealthy and upsetting and you shouldn't live that way. Frida loves that mindset, it seems like, and it's so wonderful. <laughs> no, but genuinely, every single book, they are talking about how skinny they are, are or how skinny they want to be or how they can't eat certain foods because of the calories and because you can't gain weight and this and that and it is so tiring it is so incredibly tiring i am so tired because in every single book it is talked about at this point i know what i'm guessing myself into so it's not obsessing anymore like when I read The Housemaid, especially the second one, it was obsessing because it kind of came out of nowhere and I didn't know her writing was like that. At this point, I think I've read six or seven of her books, so I know what to expect. I know what her writing is like, so it doesn't bother me as much, but it is still very tiring. I haven't read her new book, The Coworker, but I want to. I did see a third Housemaid installment is coming out, and then she's also releasing another book called The Teacher. I do want to read all three of those. I'm really hoping maybe she stops. I doubt it though and I just I'm tired sorry my headband was giving me a headache and my fringe is still growing up so I can't just wear it by itself I need something pushing it down because otherwise it's like up here but anyway point is her books are very lowly rated now because of the fact that they're all just incredibly fat phobic and I'm so tired of reading that narrative like I'm not saying her books need to have body positivity in them by any means if that's not what she wants to write about you know it's a murder mystery it doesn't need to be this platform of activism for body positivity or anything like that but also like you don't need to include that narrative like it doesn't do anything for the story I'm done ranting about this point is I'm just a bit tired of her so her books aren't highly rated for that reason but the next book that I read is these witches don't burn and I finished that on the 20th of October and I gave it three stars. I DNF this, I didn't like it, but I found the audiobook and I wanted to know what the plot was. So I ended up picking it back up again. I still didn't like the characters by the time I finished it and I am currently reading the sequel because I just want to know how the story ends, but I still don't care for the characters. The main character, Hannah, is a witch and she's an elemental. And basically the story is about her discovering that there's another witch or at least she thinks there's another witch in town. There's really weird rituals happening and she's trying to solve the mystery by herself but then it develops further and kind of gets out of control and I can't really say anymore because that would spoil the story. I can see why someone would enjoy this book. I personally didn't that much. Again, for me it's purely I find the characters very very unlikable. And like truly there isn't a likable character for me but that's very personal. They the actual plot is interesting though and the ratings are high though so this isn't a book that I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend it, it's just not a book that I enjoy that much. But the plot is very interesting. A bit much at some points but overall it's good so. The final book that I finished I finished on the 27th of October and that was Better Than the Movies and I ended up giving this 3.5 stars. This book is essentially about a girl whose childhood crush comes back to her town and to her school so she starts fake dating her next door neighbor to try and get his attention but we know how the fake dating trope goes so I'm sure you know who the real love interest is. This book was weird for me because I liked every Everybody but the main character. I found the main character to be prissy annoying and the thing is some of her actions was justifiable in the sense that I could see why her line of thinking was in that way and why she said and did certain things but it didn't make it less irritating to read about and then there were also a lot of things where I just genuinely didn't understand her motivations like whatsoever but she was the only one that I didn't like 
like everybody else I really did enjoy so it was okay ish for the most part the other thing that really bothered me was she kept referring to Wes her neighbor who she's fake dating as a bad boy and he's not he literally there's no part of him that's about she called him a bad boy because he liked teasing her when they were five and six and seven I don't know how old you are in grade school but as children like actual literal like single digit children he liked teasing her and being an annoying little boy so suddenly he's a bad boy no <laughs> That makes no sense. Maybe that was purposeful on the author's part to show how misguided the main character is, but I somehow doubt that. But yeah, Wes, not a bad boy. So sorry to disappoint, but he's just a boy. And she was annoying, but overall, I like the story. It's a very cheesy rom-com type of book, which was fun. It definitely helped me get out of my reading slump. Frida started it and then Better Than The Movies finished it. So it's a great book. It's lighthearted. Definitely would recommend it to anybody and the writing was very fun and I will be picking up some of her other books again in the future. Hi, just checking in because I did finish two more books in the last two days of October that I didn't talk about. So I finished this Coven Won't Break on the 30th of October and I gave that 3.5 stars. This is the sequel to These Witches Don't Burn which I talked about earlier and in general this book didn't make me like the main character any more than in the first book but I am happy that I read both books and I finished it because the plot was really fun it was interesting to see how it resolved and in general it was a decent book I can see why other people love it so much for me again main issue was just didn't like the main character which is fun so I definitely would recommend this series and if you're like me or you don't really like the main character that much definitely recommend the audiobook it goes so much quicker because you can definitely listen to it fairly easily on like two times speed or even more if you really want to so do you recommend it it was fun i'm happy i read it and don't think i would reread them if any more sequels come out i'd consider picking it up i don't think there is though so yeah that's what i thought it was good the next and final book that i finished this month is Autumn's Tith by Hannah Parker. I gave that 3.25 stars and I finished that on the 31st of October. So what this story is about is essentially once a year there is a choosing ceremony where different towns offer up all of their girls between the ages of 12 to 18 to be fey and then our main character wants to be picked because her best friend was picked the year before. She basically discovers that her best friend is in danger in the fey world and so she goes over and the story kind of progresses from there. I don't want to say too much more. It was fun. I liked it. This was actually a gift from my parents because I'd been wanting this book for a while because I love books about fairies and autumn's my favorite season so autumn's tith, a book about fairies, I thought it was meant for me. However, based on the ratings you could probably tell that this wasn't my favorite book ever. The one thing about this is that I will be finishing the trilogy. I'll pick up book two in the next month or so. I would like to finish it before the year ends, especially since book one ended on a cliffhanger. I really want to know what happens. Book three isn't out yet. There is no indication of when it's coming out, but I'm hoping maybe next year. But I don't think I'll be purchasing the rest of the series because it's fine. The reason I didn't like it that much was because it was very 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 info dumpy. It felt like 80% of book one was just the characters traveling and explaining the entire world and magic system. There didn't feel like there was any world building. It didn't feel like the character was really finding out anything for herself. It was literally just her and three fae riding around on horses and her being like how does this work? Oh it works like this. How does this work? Oh it works like this. How does this work? Oh, it works like this. And that was just the entirety of the book, which I really didn't like. I don't mind info dumping, but when 200 out of 300 pages are info dumping, it's not fun. It's not a good experience at all. So that's one of my issues with it. The other issue that I had with it is I 
love dialogue heavy books. I've never had a problem with them. I think they're a lot more interesting usually. I like seeing characters interact especially with the type of books that I pick up. They're either romance based or they're mystery thrillers so interactions just tend to be really fun and exciting and interesting. In this book however because it was just info dumping and all of the dialogue I actually preferred reading action scenes and there just wasn't enough action scenes. I want to say there was maybe four or five in total. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. So in general, it was a good book. I would recommend it, but not over any other books. For example, if you want this book's vibe, I would instead recommend reading Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson because it's more fleshed out. There's less info dumping. There's more action, but you do get like the magical awesome vibes a little bit, which is funny too, because I feel like every awesome fae book I've picked up has been more in spring courts. Not going to explain why. If you want to know why, read Autumn's Tith and Enchantment of Ravens and you'll understand, but I just think that's kind of funny. In general, this book was fine. Would recommend it, but also if this is on your list of many fantasies, I wouldn't necessarily prioritize this read. But I will be finishing the series and I'm hoping book three comes out soon because if book two ends on a cliffhanger and I have to wait two years to find out what happens, I'm going to be very frustrated frustrated and I'm worried because I read in the acknowledgements that book one took five years to write and book two only came out in December of last year so 11 months ago so I'm worried I'm very worried but we'll see hopefully it goes well unfortunately I did have many 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 DNFs though I won't be talking about all of them because some of them are in other challenge videos and I don't like spoiling those by telling you that I DNF certain books before you watch the video and then I'm also going to be very candid. Like I said, this was a terrible month. So I picked up, I think, three books that I DNF that didn't even make it onto my DNFs because I read so little of it that I felt like it didn't even count. Like I read four pages. That does not count as DNF. I didn't even start the book. I didn't even get through chapter one. So there is that. But I did DNF one book. I DNF that on the 24th of October. I DNF'd it because the characters were just so dull and annoying. And there wasn't even a spicy scene but the way they were thinking about each other was just not fun for me to read about. So, yeah. And then the other book that I DNF'd I DNF'd on the 20th of October, and that was Not the Witchy Wed. I wanted to read more witchy books because it is October and it's Halloween, of course. Why wouldn't I? That one I couldn't do. I could not. I tried so hard. It was... I can't read werewolf books anymore. Like, after Wattpad, I genuinely can't. Like, the word alpha, the word pack, the word shift, I, I can't do it. I cannot take it seriously. I find it embarrassing to read about. It actually like gives me physical cringe when I read about it and if you like reading about that absolutely no hate this is just my personal opinion because during Wattpad I read Justin Bieber fan fictions Andy Biersack fan fictions vampire romances and werewolf romances exclusively especially a ton of werewolf and it's just gotten to the point where I can't take it seriously. And especially also with the whole Andrew Tate thing that happened, the word alpha just gives me the ick. So I couldn't do it. I won't be picking up the audiobook for it. I know it's available and I definitely won't be picking up the sequels either. The writing style, the way they spoke, the fact it was world, there was just nothing about this book that I enjoyed. That being said, it's a very, like, very highly rated book. So don't let my review put you off by any means because a lot of people love 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 this book and I can see why but for me it's a no. It's a very 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 big no. And you know again unless it's something like not giving trigger warnings or like being problematic I usually don't blame the authors for things like that like that's all me so I know I'm being harsh on this book and I really don't mean that against the book. It's against me. I didn't like it. I'm the problem. Is it because I read too many vampire werewolf books on Wattpad? Yes. Is it because I wrote too many bad fan fictions on Wattpad? Also, yes. No, that will never see the light of day. I deleted it off of every single surface I could find. So, point is, I just, I can't do werewolves. I really, really cannot. It's too much. But I do hope that you had a better month than I did. <laughs> 
my month was really bad but i hope you had a better reading month what was your favorite book i hope it was spooky and halloween related at least in some type of way and if you like me or my videos i would really appreciate a like comment and subscribe if you feel like it i hope you have a wonderful day thank you so much bye